This week on Maker Update, Blinking with the Black Mage, a record-breaking student rocket, the art of audio hacking, a pie-controlled golf course, and experiments with LED matrix displays. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. I hope you're all doing well. I've been staying busy trying to add speakers to my garage for playing music. It's something I've been wanting to do for a long time, and it's finally happening, so I feel good about that. Uh, I've got another great show for you this week, so let's get started with the project of the week. In a video that has been making the rounds, you can see Cody Sass cracking up an audience with his Final Fantasy Black Mage costume. The key element is the animated glowing eyes, which seem to perfectly change and emote with Cody's routine. Everybody's been wondering how he pulled this off, and he now has a series of guides that walk you through it. Literally under the hood, he's using a cut up strand of Adafruit's edge lit NeoPixel LED strip mounted inside a pair of goggles with the outside lens popped out. Because the LEDs on this particular strip are mounted facing the side, Cody can string them up on their edge and see right through them. A small Adafruit trinket board manages the LEDs and stores all the different animation patterns. The Arduino code for it is posted up on GitHub. Now the trick to controlling the eye animations is a custom handheld remote molded from thermoplastic or you could also use Sugru. From the code's perspective, the remote is like a vintage Nintendo controller. It has up, down, left, right, and two buttons. Using a combination of direction and one or both buttons, Cody has 16 different eye expressions that he can trigger. The hard part has got to be remembering what combos do what. There are a lot of awesome ideas here that you can pull apart for your own costume projects. I'm excited to see how people riff on this one. I also recommend checking out Becky Stern's Remote Controlled Eyes project, which is a similar idea, but uses an inexpensive wireless remote to pull it off. You can find links to everything down in the description. It's time for some news. The students of the USC Rocket Propulsion Lab shared a video of their latest rocket launch. The rocket, called the Traveler 4, reached an apogee of 339,800 feet, breaking the world record for the highest altitude ever reached by a vehicle entirely designed and built by a college rocketry team. It's a great, inspiring video, and from a maker perspective, you get a little peek at the custom rocketry build, the PCB design, and even making their own rocket fuel. It's crazy. Now for more projects, the artist VTOL has a post detailing some of what went into his latest interactive sound sculpture called Rotor. The foundation of it is a Sony portable CD player that has been heavily modified to become an instrument all its own. There's a joystick for shifting the pitch up and down, a little one octave keyboard for sampling and playing the glitchy output, and a whole array of switches and dials for teasing out all kinds of crazy sounds. The aesthetic here is incredible with all the choices he made for the materials and highlighting the motor movement, but my favorite takeaway here is that there's a known hack for these particular Sony CD players that unlocks and unmutes all the audio artifacts that weren't meant to be heard by forcing the laser to continue reading data at all times. To learn more about that hack, he points to another article on circuit bending CD players that has more information. Another project that is short on details but too cool to ignore is this moving indoor putting green by high voltages. Using an Arduino Mega, Raspberry Pi, an I2C compatible relay, or a lot of them, and ultrasonic sensors for each of the 24 motorized jacks under the floor, you've got a computer controlled floor that you can make lumpy like a realistic golf course. What's interesting here is that he's using the ultrasonic sensors to measure the height of each jack. That way he can send out a command for the jack to rise until it reaches a specific height measured underneath the floor by the ultrasonic sensor and then reported back. I have some tips and tools to share with you. On Popular Mechanics, Kevin Dupstick has an article I like that talks about his experience getting started with working with metal. What I like about Kevin's story is that he comes to welding as a complete novice out of necessity needing a custom roof rack for his Jeep. He's also open about how he was able to find help and learn the ropes from a local professional. Speaking of which, I've got a video on Cool Tools talking with my own welding guru, Jordan Bunker. Jordan and I talk about a long reach deburring tool and how it helped him fabricating parts for BattleBots. Through the Core 77 blog, I learned about this table made from upcycled aluminum construction scraps made by designer Amar Kahlo. By compressing and shaping and shearing bales of raw aluminum, you get this weird, beautiful material. I think it's really neat and cool to see a new way to recycle material. On the Creative Applications Network blog, Philip Viznik has a great resource that looks at different approaches to coding animations and interactions to an RGB LED matrix. 
The workshop was originally performed at the UAL Creative Coding Institute in London. Students all used the same components to run through a series of code examples, starting with Arduino and moving on to processing. In the write-up, you can see exactly what hardware was used along with all the example code that was used in the workshop. If you ever wanted to do cool stuff with an LED panel, this is a great place to start. On Thingiverse, Sam Vanderbilt has this design for a 3D printed magnetic tape holder. It's a two-piece design with a magnetic pocket clip and a magnetic hub for the tape roll. If you're someone who keeps tape on them, this could be something worth checking out. And on the latest Tips, Tools, and Shops Tales newsletter, Gareth Branwin talks about adding threaded inserts for 3D prints, understanding servo horns, and testing glues for XPS foam. Finally, for this week's DigiKey Spotlight, let's take a look at the materials used for that RGB LED matrix coding class, all of which are available on DigiKey. First, let's look at the matrix, which is 64 pixels wide by 32 pixels tall with a five millimeter pitch between the LEDs. Then there's the Teensy 3.5 project board that runs all the code. There's also the smart LED shield, which makes it easy to connect up the unique cable that's coming off the matrix and getting it to the Teensy. Now here's what's so great about DigiKey. The matrix is from Adafruit and the Teensy and the shield can come from either Adafruit or SparkFun, depending on who has stock, but you can find all of it on DigiKey and put it all in one order. They have the world's largest selection of components available for immediate shipment, which can save you time and money. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up or leave a comment. I appreciate all of the encouraging comments from last week's show. You can also get on the Maker Update email newsletter to get show notes and links sent out to you automatically each week. And I especially recommend that for next week's show, which won't be here. It'll be over on the Adafruit channel for my monthly Adafruit edition of Maker Update. So don't miss that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.